Around the world, assistive technology is helping people with disabilities find unprecedented mobility. Our next story is from the United Kingdom, where another athlete is defying the odds. Ultramarathoner Simon Wheatcroft is training in the English countryside that surrounds the northern town of Doncaster. Well, it's just been a great opportunity to just push myself, see how far I can go. I think often it can be quite hard to find something in life where you can really push the boundaries of what you're capable of. Having completed more than 20 marathons, Wheatcroft has stretched the limits of human endurance, and he's done it without being able to see. Tell us about your path to becoming a runner and an ultra marathoner. So, you know, I never intended perhaps on running the distances I did. It just started as a way to see if I could run alone as a blind person. When he was a teenager, Weecroft was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, a rare disorder that causes gradual vision loss. By the time he was in his mid 20s, he had lost the ability to make out faces and colors. And it's been hard, especially when I was younger. It was very difficult to deal with, you know, a lot of anger. But as I aged and sort of adapted more, it just becomes part of who you are and something that you just live with. Faced with the challenges of mobility that come with being blind, such as colliding into obstacles, Weecroft focused his efforts on developing a technology that could help him run without a guide. Let's talk about the technology that you've used. How yep. does this technology work? How does it help you to run free and without a guide? The journey started really um, with this concept of using corrective navigation. I came up with this concept of creating a virtual corridor in physical space. And what the system would do is, if you were within this corridor, it wouldn't give you any feedback. If you leave the corridor, it would notify you to come back into the corridor. It connects to my phone. And then all I do is I choose a location I would like to navigate to. So I just say, you know, navigate to Willow Lane. So when I need to turn left, when I need to turn right, you do a little sort of haptic vibration to let me know when I need to turn and, and where I need to move. Developed by New York-based startup WearWorks, the wearable Wayband sends pulses to Weecroft through haptic or touch-based communication. He says the tech gives him a discreet way of navigating outdoor environments, which he knows firsthand can be very dangerous. What kind of literal obstacles do you have to deal with as a blind runner? The worst obstacle I've ever dealt with is um, someone left a burnt out car in the middle of the pavement once. Obviously did not see it, so I ran straight into the burnt out car and I managed oh, to sort of uh, slice up my legs and arms uh, quite badly. It's just nice to see how accurate the corridor is. While the corrective navigation technology is still in a trial and error stage, object detection, for example, Weecroft says, needs to be improved. He is hopeful that wearables like the Wayband can enable a new level of mobility and independence for the blind community. These days, Weecroft is a parent to two young boys and has decided he doesn't want to face the risks of competing solo anymore, at least until the technology is improved. He is content with doing most of his running in his garage. I'm definitely far more interested on where technology can take us. And I've just decided to experiment around with sort of athleticism as that avenue. What's next for Weecroft? Well, he's thinking about rowing across the Atlantic or doing a solo triathlon, sporting dreams that may one day become a reality thanks to tech. You know, these things I would never have dared to do years ago. I do enjoy the mindset that comes with endurance, but it's the technology that, you know, I truly love.